When you're using ChatGPT or one of its competitors, you can get answers that look like this, where it really feels like it knows me. Or you can get answers like this, which would essentially apply to every single person on this planet. And in today's video, I'll be breaking down how to get custom answers like the first one for yourself. And as there's multiple ways in ChatGPT of doing this, I'll also help you figure out which one you should be using and how to use it properly. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into this. So here's the deal. ChatGPT has multiple ways of remembering things about you and adapting to your preferences. Some are super simple and some are for experienced users only. And by the end of this video, you'll know which one of these fits your needs and what else is out there. So this right here are the four different ways to customize your ChatGPT experience for yourself. And all you're going to need for this is a ChatGPT account. If you're on the free tier, you have access to memories, custom instructions, and projects now too. If you're on the plus tier or higher, you also get GPTs. So first up, let's start by talking about memories. This is the easiest way in ChatGPT to customize your experience. In your settings under personalization, just make sure the switch is on, reference saved memories, and ChatGPT will analyze our chats and remember details about yourself that it considers important. And one more thing that I should add about them. When you have memories turned on, by default, it will also look back into your other chats. Just something to be aware of. You can turn that off here if you only want to be referencing what's inside of these memories in the future. So it's really automatic way of doing this. But there is a downside to that. Just to give you a quick demo of this, if I say something like, my friends call me the lawnmower, which, side note, they don't. We just got an email of a AI lawnmower wanting to sponsor the channel or something. Thought that was funny, so we'll use it as an example here. But if I tell ChatGPT this, there is a chance that it will save it to my memories. I can always check by going back to personalization and checking my memories. So it did not add that here. I could always tell it to manually do that by saying, save this in memories, and then it will save this to my memories. So I can manage them from here and you can see friends call them the lawnmower. Now it will tell you in this little message, but it's quite easy to forget what is inside of your memories. And also, as I pointed out, ChatGPT makes this decision itself. So in this case, it didn't want to save it. In many other cases, it will save details about your interests, hobbies, your personal life, your work life. And when I open up a brand new chat and say something like, write me an Instagram caption for my next 10 images, you will see that it writes up different captions and number eight here says the lawnmower in full motion. Now this is very subtle, but you can see that it's clearly using the nickname and it might also not happen every single time. But as soon as you have more than one memory in here, it starts infusing those facts into more and more chats. And if you would be writing Instagram captions for a work-related project, you probably wouldn't want to call yourself the lawnmower. And this is the downside of memories. And that's why once you start using ChatGPT regularly, rather than using global memories, I would strongly recommend using projects. You can create a brand new one by saying new project, and then projects allow you to group chats of a certain type. So I can have my personal chats in one and my work-related chats in another one. This could be as simple as saying work. And then here on the settings, I can enable these project only memories where it will automatically gather these details about me, but they will only influence all the chats within this work project. And additionally to just these automatically collected memories here, I can go ahead and add instructions, which is sort of a second prompt that is added on top of everything you sent in these project chats. The same thing goes for files. If I upload different files here, they will be added to the context of every conversation that I start in here. And ultimately, this is my recommendation on how to use ChatGPT. Set up a work folder, set up a private folder, and if you have other projects, feel free to add more in the future, but splitting things out is really useful. As you can build out these extra instructions and add extra files that are only relevant to your work here. And then if you just need a neutral chat, just use a new chat without a project. Another free alternative to customize your context, and this is really the first feature that ChatGPT added to do this, are custom instructions. So you could opt out of memories, and decide to manually manage your memories. So one way to do this would be just taking the different memories that you accumulate over time and then taking manual control over your destiny, so to say, by going to custom instructions, enabling these for new chats. And then these are different fields that will also be mixed into your prompt and considered with every new chat. But here you have full manual control. It won't automatically add anything or search for previous chats for information that could be relevant. This is very simple. Just what I put in here, that's what it knows and it's static. So if I just go down here and manually paste my memory. Now ChatGPT also knows that my friends call me the lawnmower. <laughs> Great. So this is pretty self-explanatory. It asks, what's your name? What's your profession? But when it comes to these fields down here, what traits should ChatGPT have? I'll recommend three each that you could fill out. One of them is what level of detail do you want? I saved this preset because I don't like when ChatGPT is getting too wordy. And then you can specify types of suggestions and critical thinking levels, creativity levels. And then you can also specify types of suggestions. I like to keep things practical. So that's what I told it here. 
here. Down here under anything else ChatGPT should know about you, I find that by far the most useful thing you can put in here are your current goals. And that's pretty much it. The only thing that I didn't cover here is that you can also pick the personality of ChatGPT, but I find defaults to be great. And those are custom instructions. They're going to apply to every chat that you open from now on. And essentially, if we just go back to the project we created for a second, this right here is the same thing. So if you're a new user, probably just start out with memories. Over time, turn those into custom instructions. And then over time, move those custom instructions into your project. That is kind of the progression you want to go through to take full control of what ChatGPT knows about you. One important note is that if I'm opening a brand new chat and I have both memories and custom instructions turned on, it will pull from both. If that's good or bad is situational, it's just something you need to be aware of. Otherwise, you'll be writing emails and it's going to be referring to you as the lawnmower and you might be confused why that's the case. And finally, there's one more thing we need to talk about here and those are GPTs. And this confuses many people for good reason because on the surface, GPTs are very similar to projects. The GPTs are managed under this tab and then you can create new GPTs or manage the ones you have. And as you can see, also here you have these instructions instructions, which are essentially the same thing as custom instructions or project instructions. But the difference here is there's a few more fields. And that's because these GPTs are essentially a project that are designed for a specific use case and that are shareable. So if you're going to be sharing these, you probably need a name for them and a description for the other person to understand what the purpose of this thing is. Probably need a conversation starter to get things going, make things easier for them. And if you fill all of those fields out, you will get one of these GPTs, which in practice looks like this. And this is one of the more complex ones that we have. It's a prompt improver that I highly recommend, but that's more of a intermediate workflow. But essentially all of the custom instructions in the background, all the knowledge files and everything I set it up with are at work here. And practically this one is designed to improve prompts. So if I tell it my prompt is write me an email and I answer some of these follow-up questions, it will apply everything I told it in the background to improve this prompt, which is the single purpose this GPT serves. And there you go. Here's the improved prompt right here. And this is certainly not a default chat GPT response right here. The downside of GPTs is that it doesn't allow you to group multiple conversations. So as you start new chats, it's easy to lose them in your history over time. And they add another layer of customization with custom actions. And you get to select which tools the GPT has access to, making them kind of the most advanced thing that you can do within ChatGPT. Some people prefer GPTs over projects, but I can tell you I myself in my day-to-day -day workflow, around 90% of the time, I find myself in one of my two or three main projects, work context, personal context. And then often I do specific projects if I'm working on a project. And that's really all the level of conversation customization you have in ChatGPT. And obviously there's also just adding things to your prompt. These are just the different ways to help you out so you don't have to add specific information every single time. But it leaves one question open, which is how do these different things interact? with each other. Both custom instructions and memories are account level. So they affect every single conversation you have with ChatGPT, including the conversations in projects, except conversations with GPTs. As GPTs serve a single use case, these are not affected by your memories and custom instructions. And that's really it. And here's what it breaks down to. Use memories if you're new to ChatGPT or only use it casually, which I would say is less than five conversations a week. Then you can graduate to projects which allow you to separate your work life from your private life. But in there, make sure to turn on project-based memories. And if you want to manage the context for somebody else, GPTs are by far the best way to do it. For these, you will need a paid plan though. And ultimately, custom instructions are optional, but if you're using projects, just like I suggested, you don't really need them. And that's really all the customization tools in ChatGPT. And in case you're wondering what are the best use cases for your particular interest inside of ChatGPT, I created a one minute assessment that is going to recommend a set of prompts that are guaranteed to be relevant to you. Because what good is customizing your answers if you're not even exactly sure what task ChatGPT can even do for you? Check that out in the first link in the description. And with that being said, my name is Igor, and I hope you have a wonderful day.